I got emotional reading this chapter. Like, I just got finished rereading this chapter, like, finishing it for the first time. And it's, it, it, it's, there's so many emotions within this. Like, we waited so long. It's, it's been over 20 years. Even Puck himself, he, he referenced it, which that's even more amazing just to show the length of time of how long this journey has been for this very monumental moment for the story. Every fan of Berserk that is still reading this series to this day, this was the moment many were waiting for because it's a journey that Guts has you know, went on since the very beginning, after the Golden Age, after the Band of the Hawks, after the Eclipse, the iconic moment that changed everything in Guts' life forever, we have been waiting for this moment where Casca will finally have her mind back. She will be sane. And we know with the last time we saw them, like two chapters ago, because we had a little switch over POV to Griffith's side of the story, we know that she got her memory back. We just did not get to see the continuation of it. So this chapter is kind of finally seeing who Casca really is. What is she now that she's gained her memories back? Is she angry? Is she sad? Is she happy? You know, what is the emotion she's feeling? Is she really the same Casca that we know from the Golden Age before the Eclipse? There's so many things that you're left wondering what the last chapter really left us on, and this chapter kind of gives context to that, and as I said, if you're a fan that's been following this for a very long time, this this is a chapter, even if you're a grown man, I can see you breaking down and crying, because it is one of those chapters. It's a chapter that, like I said, many have been waiting for 20 plus years. I'm only 24, so when you think about the length of that, that's kind of ridiculous. So, yeah. So, Costco. It's, it's been, it's been a while. Maybe not 20 years for me, because I haven't been reading that series for that long for obvious reasons. I'm only 24. But, I just, seeing new dialogue from her that isn't, let's say, a flashback or just rereading the Golden Age, seeing her actually speak is something that is so unreal, I feel like I wasn't actually reading a chapter of Berserk. I felt like I was reading, like, a, a fan manga chapter or something just because of how unreal it is to see her character not in her baby like self acting like you know she's just messed up so i'm just it's shocking i'm just like i said i'm in a state of shock and i think many can understand why i feel this way because of that and seeing her interact with the group is something that it's just so jarring. It's so unsettling because we're just not used to it. Even though Casca's technically been with the group. You know, Asidro, Shurike, you know, Farnese, Serpico, Guts. You know, she's traveled with them for a very long time. You know, she's always been that child. The one that needs to be protected. The one that can't even defend herself. Always getting into problems and trouble and stuff. And so seeing how in this chapter she demonstrated that she's able to coexist with them, talk with them, and actually show a skill to where she's able to fight like she did in the past. Maybe not to the same level, but she's still able to put up a good fight. There's just so many things within this chapter that just blows me away. But it doesn't just stop at that. The major thing about this chapter that I think is going to get everybody is the, the final sequence. Because I know I've talked about, you know, her interacting with the group. You know, the regular characters that we have been, you know, accustomed to. That's like the new band of the Hawks that Guts has been traveling with. And how it took him so long to finally open up to so many people. And to have friends to rely on. It was something that was a really big part of Guts' character growth, and I've talked about it a lot throughout my journey of this series, talking about it in individual volumes and how he struggled, because, I mean, anyone that goes through the trauma that Guts went through, anyone, 
it, it's going to be hard to want to form a friendship with anyone, especially what you witness. She, and, you know, the journey that you're set on, you would want to be isolated. You want to not have anyone around because it's dangerous, really dangerous, and not the normal type of dangerous. It's, it's beyond that. And he finally opened up. He started to rely on people. He wasn't just acting like himself, and he finally allowed people to help him with Casca, which he never wanted to do in the first place. He realized his weakness as well, and how he couldn't be the only one to protect her. He couldn't protect her because he was slowly becoming a monster himself. There's just so many things to analyze when it comes to Guts' character, and seeing the critical moment of finally when he could see Casca, what would it do to him as well? Not just seeing her fixed, but what would it do to Guts? How would he feel? Obviously, he'd probably feel a state of relief, but there's just so many things that are within Guts' mind, and we know how complicated his mind is, that we, we, he, you know he's thinking, like, how is she going to react to me? Because if she does remember things while she was in a baby-like state, she knows what Guts did to her when he, he did, you know, something that was almost un he could never turn back from. He was about to become a straight-up monster, like a real monster, and then, you know, do exactly what Griffith did, and then, then Griffith stuff. You know, he doesn't know what type of emotion she had, if she wanted to take vengeance on him or something because he left and ran away. I mean, there's so many things that is obviously in Guts' mind. And so seeing Casca finally walk up to him is something, like I said, many of us have been waiting for. And it happened. We finally got to see... Guts and Casca in the same panel together and actually somewhat exchanged dialogue. Wasn't a lot, at least from Guts' side, because I think he's probably in a state of shock just as much as we are, but we do have a scene. And from the scene, you could clearly see from little expressions of his character before we even see his face of how he is pained by Casca's presence. For instance, after all this time, it's finally, it's happening. Like, you see how he grabs his arm. There's a brief little panel where you see him just start to rub his wounded arm, which, you know, he lost to try to save her. You can just see how he grabs his arm. And you can just see by the way he does that, he's, he's remembering. He's remembering what it costed to get Casca here, to be able to allow her to live in the first place. He's, he's remembering everything. Was it worth it? And all that. And you can just see how he does that. And that, that little expression from his character means so much. Just seeing that one little panel. But then, once everything seems like it's going A-OK, -okay, and this is why I got, I got real emotional and in like... He turns the corner because she starts to remember the eclipse. He turns around. She sees him, and the thing she sees is Guts, but not the Guts we know. And it is the greatest horror that you could ever get in this chapter for a Berserk fan. Because she was so traumatized now. Now we know she has to see it. She is being forced to see it. She could only see the monster that is Guts. And it's not Guts' fault either. You gotta look at the context of why she acted like she did. It's not just because of what happened within the Eclipse to her and Griffith and all that. But you gotta remember the final moment. Before it happened. Before she went like she was throughout this entire journey of the story... Guts was looking directly at her, being forced to look at her by the demons, being held by his head, which he lost his eye because of that. And you gotta remember, Guts' head was being held by a demon. It's how he lost his eye. And you gotta remember, in those moments, Guts, to get away from the demon and save Casca, he had to hit his arm with a rusty broken sword, just straight up jagged, just going at his arm, just to let the demon let him loose. And it was the final thing that Casca saw. It was, it was the final thing. It was. Before she went to what she was for these past 20 years, the final thing she saw before everything went dark, basically, was seeing Guts surrounded by demons, covered basically in blood, her horrific, scary, demonic-like face of rage, and trying to rush at her. You gotta imagine from her perspective how scary that looks. 
And it isn't necessarily Guts' fault. In fact, you could kind of say it was planned all along by the God Hand. And even after Casca being fixed, it seems like the effects of Griffith is still there after all this time. Because it seems like it was purposeful for Guts to be the final thing she saw, and he saw her with one of his eyes. And so if she ever did come back from the trauma, she would know. She would be able to not see him because of it. It's it's just sad. It's honestly just so emotional. And seeing how Casca, she finally has awakened, but she can't even look at Guts because the final thing she saw within the Eclipse was Guts, which would have an effect on anyone. That, it's just, it's trauma. But it goes one step further. Seeing Guts' facial reaction to just how horrified Casca was is what really... I think hits me the hardest because Guts is always a man that doesn't show a lot of emotion. He's always stoic. He's someone that does have emotion. We know he does. We know his character, but he typically doesn't show it much. And recently he's been happy. We've actually seen him smile, which is just, it's been an insane journey just to see our boy Guts actually smile for a change. And then we see the man just his face his face says it all when you see the man just look at her and you just see his he just gets in a state of just sadness his face is so pained it's been so long since we've seen his face look exactly like that it's it hurts it really hurts to see a character like him go through this once again and it's probably he blames himself because he doesn't know exactly why she's acting like that but it's everything that he feared it was everything he feared. It was the greatest fear that Guts really had on his journey. That after what he did to Casca that one night by himself. And he was, you know, succumbing to his urges and stuff. And being controlled kind of by his darkness. You know, he blamed himself and thought that Casca would hate him. She never really treated him kind of the same ever since. And when you see that, you know he's probably thinking back. And he's thinking that this is all my fault. I deserve this. And... When he walks off into the tree line, it, it really says a lot. And I, I I, really hope he's able to kind of overcome this, because this is probably one of the only things that he really has left. I mean, yes, he's made a lot of friends and stuff, Isidro, Shurike, he's, you know, has Serpico, and, you know, he has Farnese. But Casca was the one thing that really attached him and kept him pushing forward despite everything despite breaking his body itself to ruining his own health he kept pushing forward because of her and now that he's fixed her she's healed technically and she could be around the people that he's perfectly set up for guts really he doesn't need to technically keep pressing forward that's kind of what his mind could potentially be like he might not need to be around anymore and it's a scary thought it is and it's it doesn't just stop at that it's possible now that Casca's fixed he can focus on other things and maybe getting rid of the very man that now once again has plagued his life and ruined his meeting with Casca which is Griffith so I could see him getting up and wanting to get vengeance once again getting back onto what he once was as the black swordsman very long ago in you know volume 14 onward now uh Speaking of which, Skull Knight does appear, and it's uh, it's been a while, too, since we've actually seen Skull Knight. I mean, not as long for me as other people, but, I mean, it's been a while. Because when you really think about the last time we saw him, it was when, like, you know, Fantasia or whatever popped up. The, all the astral layers kind of mixed together and all that, and that means the God Hand can kind of start to manifest in the real physical realm. It's, uh, it's been a while since we've seen him, because the last time we really saw him was when he kind of created, you know, Fantasia, when he struck at Femto, Griffith, and, uh, he, he messed up. He made a big oof. So, it's been a while, and I do wonder exactly what he has to talk about, because he's always been this mysterious character that's helped Guts along his way, and it has been hinted at that as time goes on, Guts most likely might become something that the Skull Knight is, because it's been implied for a very long time now that the Skull Knight was once like Guts, 
and then driven to be where he's at right now, and he's kind of lost his physical human form, and maybe Guts might embrace that and become something very similar. Whatever the case may be, though, I feel like Skull Knight's probably going to have a proposition for Guts, probably say, now that you've healed her, what's next? And he might ask Guts to help him on his conquest to get rid of the God Hand, attack, you know, you know, all the people that's in the main capital city of the, you know, human world now, I could definitely see that happening. It's definitely likely because of his appearance, and I could definitely see the Moonchild popping up as well now that we know that the Moonchild is definitely confirmed to be Griffith. So, I, th there's a lot of things that's probably going to happen in the upcoming chapters, and I am excited for it. So, yeah, it's been a journey. It's been quite the journey, and I'm glad to finally see this chapter, even if it is sad. It is berserk, by the way. We all know that's how it usually goes. I'm glad I finally got some closure to a big moment of the story. It, it really is some good closure. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how you felt about this chapter. Be honest in the comments below. I love you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful night or day wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, Chibi out.